In this lecture, we shall discuss about orthogonality and Gram-Smith orthogonalization process. Uh, here, we shall discuss about orthogonality of vectors in an inner product space. Recall that in the previous lecture, uh, we, we have generalized the uh, distance or length concept of vectors. Uh, that is, we have defined that length of a vector and distance between two vectors. So, here in this uh, lecture, we shall discuss about that angle between vectors or that is orthogonality. So, this orthogonality co concept uh, is uh, motivated by uh, the law of cosines in plane R 2. So, let us see this. So, here we shall discuss about this orthogonality of vectors and this Gram-Smith orthogonalization process, orthogonalization process. So, this orthogonalization concept has been motivated by the law of cosines in R 2. So, the law of cosines in R 2 or in a plane Euclidean plane is given by this u minus v norm square is equal to norm of u square that Square, square of norm of V minus twice norm of U, norm of V cos theta, say this B equation 1. Here the vectors U and V, they are vectors in R 2, U and V are vectors in R 2 and theta is the angle between u and v. So, this norm we have considered with respect to the inner product in R 2. So, the vectors u and v are like this that if this is the vector u and this is the vector v then this u minus v will be this vector or in other words and this angle theta is angle between u and v or in other words this is these are three sides of a triangle and this cosine law that holds for this triangle. So, this one if we write they in, in terms of inner product then this one gives that one gives that a norm square of u minus b this vector that is equal to inner product of u minus b with itself and right hand side is inner product of u with itself plus inner product of v with itself minus twice norm of u norm of v cos theta. So, on simplifying this we get on simplifying on simplifying we get minus 2 times inner product of u and v that is equal to minus 2 times norm of u norm of v cos theta 
or cos theta is equal to inner product of u and v divided by norm of u times norm of v. Of course, here u and v are non-zero vectors that u and v are non-zero vectors. So, this says that if u and v are orthogonal that is if u and v are orthogonal or u is perpendicular to v then we get then value of this cos theta that is cos pi by 2 and this is equal to 0. So, uh, this implies that this implies that right hand side this inner product of u v is equal to u and v is equal to 0 and conversely conversely if this inner product of u and v is equal to 0 then this value of cos theta will be equal to 0 or theta is equal to pi by 2 that is u is orthogonal to v. So, this says that if u and v are orthogonal to each other orthogonal to each other then this inner product is equal to 0 and the converse is also equal to 0. So, it says that so on summarizing we can write this that u inner product of u and v that is equal to 0 if and only if u is orthogonal to v. So, motivated by this concept that one defines this orthogonality for vectors in an inner product space. So, here we shall define this orthogonality of vectors orthogonality of vectors in an inner product space. So, let us take that V be let V be an inner product space V an inner product space then vectors vectors u and v in v in, in this inner product space are called orthogonal are called orthogonal if this inner product of u and v is equal to 0. We also define that orthogonality of a set of vectors. So, we say that a set S of vectors in V is called an orthogonal set is called an orthogonal set if every pair of vectors every pair of distinct vectors pair of, pair of distinct vectors in S are orthogonal. Further we say that a orthogonal set is orthonormal if it satisfy this condition. Further an orthogonal set an orthogonal set S is called orthonormal orthonormal if norm of every vector is equal to 1 in this set S if norm of V is equal to 1 for all vectors V in S. So, next we shall discuss about 
an orthogonal basis. So, earlier in case of a vector space we have seen uh, a basis. So, now we shall define an orthogonal basis. So, this orthogonal basis here we say again we consider an inner product space. So, let V be an inner product space. a set S of vectors in V is called an orthogonal basis, orthogonal basis of V if the following conditions hold. That first condition is that S is an orthogonal set, S is an orthogonal set and second condition is that S is a basis for V that is a set of vectors in an inner product, product space is an orthogonal basis if it is basis and every pair of distinct vectors in S are orthogonal. So, further we say that S is an orthonormal basis if that norm of every vector in S is equal to 1. So, further an orthogonal basis and orthogonal basis S is an orthonormal, orthonormal basis of V if norm of every vector is equal to 1. So, let us uh, see few examples of orthogonal basis. So, here first example is that trivial one the standard basis in R n the standard basis in R n that is this set that 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 and this 0 0 1 this is an orthonormal basis. This is an orthonormal basis for R n. So, second example is like this. Here we shall see that this set consisting of vectors 1 1 minus 1 1 is an orthogonal set is an orthogonal orthogonal set in R2 with respect to the standard inner product with respect to the standard inner product. So, we but we shall see that if we change this inner product and take different one, then this vectors need not be orthogonal. So, it is of course, important to say that uh, vectors are orthogonal with respect to which basis that uh, with respect to which inner product that mentioning that inner product is also important. Take this inner product of these two vectors 1 1 and minus 1 1 and this we get 1 into minus 1 plus 1 into 1 and that is equal to 0. So, this implies that these two vectors are orthogonal, but 
this set is not an orthonormal set this 1 1 minus 1 1 is not an orthonormal set because that norm of this vector 1 1 that is equal to the positive square root of inner product of this vector with itself and that is equal to square root of 2. So, next we can have another example that is we consider an a different kind of inner product in R 2. So, one checks that this mapping checks that this uh, checks that for the vectors u say that is x 1 x 2 and v is vector y 1 y 2 in R 2 this map uh, mapping or this function that u v defined like this x 1 y 1 minus x 2 y 1 minus x 1 y 2 plus 4 x 2 y 2 is an inner product is an inner product in R 2. So, with respect to this inner product the above set is not an orthogonal set with respect to this inner product this inner product this set consisting of vectors 1 1 minus 1 1 is not an orthogonal set because here this inner product of these two vectors is given by here we get this 1 into minus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 minus 1 into 1 plus 4 into 1 into 1 and here one can see that its value is equal to 3 that is not equal to 0. So, therefore, these two vectors 1 1 and minus 1 1 is not an orthogonal set with respect to this inner product here we have defined. So, when we say that two vectors are orthogonal with respect to which inner product we are saying that is important. In some inner product vectors may be orthogonal, but with respect to some other inner product they may not be orthogonal. So, next we shall see another example that fourth example here we consider the inner product space consider V be the inner product space that is consist of the set of all real valued continuous functions on this interval minus 1 1. So, here uh, this is the set of all real valued continuous functions continuous functions 
on this interval minus phi to pi. So, V is an inner product space with respect to the inner product to this inner product inner product of f and g is equal to 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi f x g x and d x. So, with respect to this inner product we shall show that with respect to this inner product the set of all functions uh, the set that is sin n x n from 1 to up to this infinity. This is an orthonormal set orthonormal set. So, of to check this that this set of functions sin n x n from 1 to 3 up to infinity this is an orthonormal set one should prove that for this one checks that this integral value of this integral 1 upon pi integral minus phi to pi sin n x into sin m x d x this value is equal to 1 if n is equal to m and this is equal to 0 for n not equal to m. So, uh, then next we shall see another important property of orthogonal uh, vectors or a set an orthogonal set of vectors a set of orthogonal vectors is that they are linearly independent. So, this is an important result of this orthogonality that every orthogonal set of every orthogonal set of non zero vectors in an inner product space in an inner product space is linearly independent is linearly independent so here this set of vectors that consisting of orthogonal vectors may be finite or infinite, but in any case this will be a linearly independent set. So, let us con consider let S be a finite, finite or infinite set of non zero here we are considering considering non zero orthogonal vectors in the given space well here we are considering non zero orthogonal vectors uh, one thing uh, can be noticed that the vector 0, 0 vector is orthogonal to every vector and whenever this 0 vector belongs to a set that set cannot be linearly independent. Therefore, here we are considering this non-zero set of vectors. 
well to prove that this S is a linearly independent set, here we consider a set of m vectors let v 1 v 2 to v m be a set of m vectors in S. Of course, this m is less than or equal to cardinality of S and the vectors v 1, v 2 to v m are all distinct. So, let v be this linear combination that alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha m v m, where this alpha i is they belongs to the field or their scalars. So, next for any k for any k, k lies in between 1 to m, we can consider this inner product of v with v k and this inner product is from the property of the inner product we can see that this is equal to sum of this summation alpha i v i v k inner product of v i v k i from 1 to m. And since this v 1, v 2 to v m are orthogonal vectors. So, for i not equal to k, this inner product is equal to 0. So, therefore, we get this is equal to alpha k times this inner product of v k with itself. This follows from orthogonality of the vectors v 1, v 2 to v m. So, then since v k is not equal to 0, since this v k is a non-zero vector, inner product of v k with itself that is also not equal to 0. Therefore, we can have this value of alpha k can be written as inner product of v and v k divided by this inner product of v k with itself or in other words this is equal to inner product of v and v k divided by norm square of this vector v k. So, this is true for all k from 1, 2 to m. So, therefore, if v is equal to 0, then alpha k is equal to 0 for all k from 1, 2 to m. Hence, this S is a linearly independent set, linearly independent set. So, here we have some consequences, some obvious consequences that first corollary that we have is if this set S, it is consist of say V 1, V 2 to V n is an orthogonal basis, is an orthogonal basis 
for this inner product space V, then it is easy to determine the coordinate of every vector in this inner product space. Uh, then for every vector for every vector v belongs to v the coordinates the kth coordinate of v is given by this inner product of v with v k divided by v k norm square that is the same thing we can write that is if this v is equal to say alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha n belongs to this inner product space then this kth coordinate alpha k is given by inner product of v and v k divided by v k norm square. So, in an inner product space whenever we have an orthogonal basis then the coordinates can be determined by this formula. So, the next we will have another consequence that is corollary 2. So, this says that if we have a finite dimensional inner product space and if the dimension of the inner product space be n, then at the most how many orthogonal vectors we can have. So, the answer is obviously at the most n. So, if v is an n dimensional inner product space, n dimensional inner product space, then v can have at the most n number of orthogonal vectors v can have at the most n number of mutually orthogonal vectors. So, this is obvious from the theorem that we have more than n mutually orthogonal vectors then they are they have to be linearly independent and that contradicts to the dimension of this vector space. Next we will see another important result of this inner product spaces is that given any set of uh, linearly independent vectors we can construct orthogonal set of vectors from those given linearly independent vectors and that process is called Gram-Smith orthogonalization process. So, here this method is called Gram-Smith orthogonalization process. So, this result we write as a theorem. So, this theorem is like this. We consider an inner product space V. Let V be an inner product space and v 1, v 2 to v n be 
a set of linearly independent vectors linearly independent vectors in V. Then from this set of linearly independent vectors, we can construct a set of orthogonal vectors like this. Then one can construct then one can construct a set u 1 u 2 up to this u n of orthogonal vectors from this v 1 v 2 v n such that such for any k for any k k lies in between 1 and n this set of vectors u 1 u 2 up to u k is a basis for the span of that is linear span of the vectors v 1 v 2 up to v k or in other words these vectors u 1 u 2 u k they depends on the vectors v 1 v 2 to v k. For this is true for any k for 1 2 to n. So, here while proving this theorem we use this gram smith orthogonalization process. So, we construct the vectors e 1 we construct vectors u 1 u 2 to u n in the following way. So, that we write in this step wise. Say first step is that we consider this i is equal to say 1 and second step we take this u i is equal to say v i and third step we increase this i is equal i is equal to i plus 1 and then we check that if i is greater than n then stop otherwise we shall construct the vector u i in this way this u i is equal to v i minus summation this inner product of v i with u j divided by norm u j square multiplied by this vector u j and j runs from 1 to i minus 1. So, we continue this process that fifth step then go to third step. So, continuing this process that we can construct the vector c 1 u 2 to u n and this method of construction is called Gram Smith orthogonalization process. Uh, this is called so called because the vectors u uh, u 1 u 2 to u n will be an orthogonal set. So, to prove this, this 
set u 1 u 2 to u n is an orthogonal set. First uh, notice that this u i s are not, not 0. Note that this u i is not equal to 0 because otherwise v i will be a linear combination of if u i is equal to 0 then v i can be expressed as a linear combination of vectors u 1 u 2 up to u i minus 1 and this u i u 1 u 2 up to u i minus 1 are expressed in terms of the vectors v 1 v 2 to v i minus 1. So, therefore, this if u i is equal to 0 then v i will be a linear combination of a linear combination of vectors v 1 v 2 up to v i minus 1 and this is not true because this set is a linearly independent set v 1 v 2 to v i is a linearly independent set. So, this is not true and hence each of this u i is a non-zero vector. So, uh, next we shall check that this u 1 u 2 next we check that this set u 1 u 2 up to u n is an orthogonal set. So, for this for example, let us check this inner product u 2 with u 1. So, this u 2 is given by v 2 minus v 2 inner product of v 2 and u 1 divided by norm u 1 square multiplied by u 1 and u 1. So, on simplifying we get this v inner product of v 2 with u 1 minus v 2 inner product of v 2 u 1 divided by norm u 1 square and inner product, product of u 1 with itself and this is equal to 0. So, this u 1 and u 2 are u 1 and u 2 are orthogonal. So, in general for any positive integer in general we can verify this in general for any positive integer m, positive integer m less than or equal to n and this r greater than or equal to 1 less than or equal to m, we have this inner product of u m plus 1 u r. So, this can be written as u m plus 1 can be expressed as from this construction it is equal to v m plus 1 minus summation in a product of v m plus 1 with u j divided by u j norm square times u j j from 1 to m and inner product with u r. So, here uh, this 
on simplifying we get that inner product of v m plus 1 with u r minus summation j equal to from j equal to from 1 to m v m plus 1 u j inner product of v m plus 1 u j divided by u j norm square is equal and this inner product of u j with u r and this will be equal to again from orthogonality that this set of vectors this uh, this v ok this we can get because it is true for all these uh, lower values we get this inner product of v m plus 1 u r and minus this v m plus 1 u r because this we get v m plus 1 u r and this is equal to 0. So, this shows that the vectors u 1, u 2 to u n is an orthogonal set So, this is how we construct that this set u 1, u 2, u n is orthogonal. Then uh, here we have to prove the last part of this theorem that for any k the set next for any k with k lies from 1 to 2 n this u 1 u 2 to u n is a basis for this span v 1 v 2 to do v k because this u 1 u 2 to u k can be expressed as linear combination of v 1 v 2 to v k and since this is a linear uh, that uh, for any k here this vectors u 1 u 2 to u k can be expressed can be expressed from this construction only construction of u 1 u 2 to u k can be expressed as linear combination of can be expressed as a linear combination of of vectors v 1 v 2 to v k and since this is linearly independent set u 1 u 2 u k is linearly independent linearly independent we get that this set is a basis u 1 u 2 to u k is a basis for span of these vectors v 1 v 2 to v k. So, here we can have one remark that from a given set of linearly independent vectors not only we can construct orthogonal set of vectors. In fact, we can construct uh, an orthonormal, orthonormal set of 
vectors. So, here uh, from this set of from this set of vectors from this set of vectors v 1, v 2 to v k and orthonormal set of vectors say w 1, w 2, w k can be constructed as w i can be taken as u i divided by norm of u i. So, now this norm of all these vectors u w 1, w 2, w k will be equal to 1 and they are also orthogonal. So, this will be an orthonormal set. So, this suggests that every finite dimensional inner product space is orthonormal basis. So, from here we get this result that every finite dimensional inner product space has an orthonormal basis. Every finite dimensional inner product space inner product space has an orthonormal basis. So, this we can construct from this Gram Smith orthonormalization process and then from this remark we can get orthonormal vectors. So, let us see one example that applying Gram Smith or orthogonalization process how to construct orthogonal vectors from a given set of linearly independent vectors. So, here we consider R 3 with standard with the standard basis with the standard inner product with the standard inner product and vectors be like this let v 1 be the vector in R 3 3 0 4 v 2 be the vector minus 1 0 7 and v 3 be the vector 2 9 11. So, easily one can see that v 1, v 2, v 3 is a linearly independent is linearly independent set of vectors in R 3. So, here we shall construct the corresponding orthogonal set of vectors u 1, u 2 to u 3. So, uh, applying Gram Smith orthogonalization process, we first take this u 1 be the vector v 1. So, that is 3 0 4 and u 2 will be v 2 minus inner product of v 2 with u 1 divided by norm u 1 square multiplied by u 1. So, this is equal to minus 1 0 7 minus this inner product can be calculated and it is equal to 25 and norm of u 1 square is also equal to 25 and u 1 is 304. On simplifying, we get this u 2 is equal to minus 4 0 3. Similarly, this vector u 3 
can be calculated from this gram smith orthogonalization process like this this is equal to v3 minus inner product of v3 u1 divided by norm u1 square u1 minus v3 u2 this inner product divided by norm u2 square multiplied by u2 and this one can compute as 0 9 0 this vector. So, now this on apply, applying this gram smith orthogonalization process we get this u 1 u 2 u 3 that u 1 u 2 u 3 that is the vectors consist of uh, 3 0 4 and the vector minus 4 0 3 and this vector 0 9 0 is a orthogonal this is an orthogonal set of vectors set of vectors in R 3 with respect to this standard inner product in R 3. So, from here also one can get the corresponding orthonormal set further this set that u i divided by norm of u i, i from 1, 2 up to 3. This set that is norm of u 1 will be 5, 3, 0, 4, norm of u 2 is also equal to 5 and that minus 4, 0, 3 and this vector that 0, 1, 0 is the orthonormal set obtained from orthonormal set obtained from the vectors v1, v2, v3. So, this is how one can apply that Gram-Smith orthogonalization process and get a set of orthogonal vectors and uh, also further one can get a set of orthonormal vectors from the given set of linearly independent vectors. Also this Gram-Smith orthogonalization process one can apply and uh, test the linearly uh, dependency or independency of vectors. Suppose uh, the given set of vectors v1, v2 to vn are given and they are not known whether they are linearly independent. Then we consider the non-zero vectors v1, v2 to vn and then apply this orthogonalization process. Then at some step we get the sum u i will be equal to 0, then the set of vectors v 1, v 2 to v n, the given set will be linearly dependent. Otherwise, we will able to construct an orthogonal set of non-zero vectors u 1, u 2 to u n. Okay, that is all for the lecture. Thank you.